Hey guys, today we're going to be working on the skill of colorizing a grayscale paint. My name is James. Welcome to the Edison James channel. This is the very first time that I've been on camera on my channel. In fact, in general, I have avoided being on camera forever. I, I'm not the person to love the camera and the camera's not I think we have a mutually distant relationship. But the thing is, I I really would love to start making these videos where I, be, I just begin sharing some of the things that I'm doing. I watch a lot of you guys making your videos, other creators. Um, I'm amazed at how much uh, creativity, artistic talent is out there. And I know that I watch videos to learn things about a variety of techniques, of tools, of of anything that would help me to improve my own create, creative journey. And I think that people would probably enjoy watching what I do as well. So my plan is, as somebody who's been uh, creating for a very long time in my own ways, I'm, uh, I'm a 24 year plus uh, graphic designer, branding expert, um, I've worked with big companies, small companies. That's been my realm. Um, but my passion lies in, in drawing and painting. And that's what I wanted to be when I was a little kid. I went to art school. I was trained as an illustrator. My career just never went that direction. And I'm kind of circling back. And Edison James is all about creating, sharing my passion, my interest, and and hope, hopefully um, being able to contribute to the community of creators who are out there who want to improve their own stuff and maybe I have something to share. So I'm just, I don't even know what direction I'm gonna go overall. I'm just gonna start as I'm working on projects. I'm just gonna invite people into these projects that I'm doing and let you see my process. Let you know some of the tricks and things that I apply. Today, what I'm going to be doing is taking a piece and I'm just gonna switch over so you can see what it is. Uh, this is Chris Hem Hemsworth, who I love because he's in the Marvel Universe and as the character Thor, yeah, I just fell in love with, with that character and his portrayal of that character. And I'm practicing more than anything when I did this piece. I, I was practicing kind of a, a pencil sketch sort of approach. But of course, by virtue of doing that, it was a black and white grayscale rendering. And I thought, uh, you know, it would be very cool to demonstrate how I go about colorizing something like this. You can just apply a color layer to a grayscale and you can colorize it beautifully that it looks as though you painted it in color in the first place. Now, the reason why there's pros and cons to doing it this way, um, I think the biggest con that I could think of is you're not, you're not in full control of the, of the pixel color. By that, I mean, you're not, you're not selecting the, the paint color. You're not dabbing the brush and mixing the color to be the exact precise color that you want to lay down on the canvas. You're relying on the coloration tools uh, to transform the pixels that you've created into uh, what would be a relative coloration that you're desiring to see. But the thing that is really nice about black and white rendering, and you could even do this when you're doing a full color painting, is that you can you can work the values to the to the level that they ought to be. So when you convert a painting, a drawing to black and white, you're you're now um, you're you're seeing the the shadows and the lights in just a very raw form. The blacks versus the whites, the lights versus the shadows, and and that allows you to see if the values are correct. Because sometimes when you're painting, it's, you might be struggling with the, the depth. The, like it feels as though the painting isn't coming to life on your canvas. And you might not know why it's not. And sometimes the thing that's lacking is the depth 
of value in the shadows and lights. And when you begin to develop the shadows and push them darker, you begin to see more contour and shape in, in the painting. And it, it just makes your painting come alive. But sometimes you don't even see that until you see it in grayscale. So when you do something in grayscale from the beginning, you've already kind of worked out the values, the shadows and the lights to, to a realistic degree, if that's what you're going for. And, and that's a benefit of doing it in grayscale and then colorizing it after. So that's kind of the approach that I'm taking. Um, I actually never intended to color this when I did this, um, but I just thought it would be a great exercise being that it's my very, very first video that I'm doing, um, why not do something like this? And I think, I think it'd be useful for people who want to know how to do this technique. So I'm not basing this on any, I, I don't have a reference photo that I'm looking at as I'm going through this. I'm just going to start and you can see the color choices that I make. I'll explain the color choices as I'm going through them and hopefully uh, you'll be able to to get inside, inside my head and understand why it is that I'm doing certain things. So let's jump back to our painting and let's see what happens when we go. So first I will create a new layer that'll sit above and that's my color layer. And I'm going to switch the setting on my color layer. You have the blending options and you can change it to be uh, color and there's a few different options here. I'm not going to explain them all Maybe that's a future video if anyone is interested on what these blending options do, but I'm gonna go with just straight color and we can Add a layer above above that to uh, you know play with some of those other blending options as well If I want to create more shadow or play with the lighting a little bit the highlighting and whatnot Okay, so let's start with um, a general skin color and I'm gonna make my I'm gonna make my color palette here pop a little bit more because that's gonna be important as we're working through it. So I, I don't know exactly what color I, I'm gonna want it to be again because I'm not picking uh, the paint pigment itself. I'm applying a, a color layer over top. I don't know how it's gonna behave until I start laying down color, and that's why I'm gonna be a little bit loose as I'm painting. Um, Brush choices, you can do anything from an airbrush to just your favorite uh, sketching, uh, blending brushes um, for myself. I have some favorite brushes that I really like playing with, um, but I'm gonna go with one of my main uh, diamond brushes or a square, you can see I'm blowing it up here for you. I'm, I'm gonna lay on a thick, broad stroke to start. And all I'm gonna do to start is I'm not going to mask. You can, you can mask, and that'll allow you to be a little bit more free with, with the color, the coloration. Uh, I'm not going to bother going through the masking process. It just doesn't feel like something I want to do. So the behavior, as you can see, as you're, you're laying. So all it's doing is it's layering and colorizing the pixels. Right now it's just a monotone option and the pressure of course will dictate how heavy the color will. So I can lighten it, see if I'm pressing, it'll darken it and really colorize those pixels. And I may or may not want to do that to start, but now this, this is a very, very orange skin tone and I can tell already that I'm gonna have to adjust that, but I'm just gonna color just so you can see what it looks like being applied. Let's go down to the neckline. We'll get the neckline in there as well. Masking sometimes is a really good option to take just because then you're not worrying about edges. Here I will have to worry a little bit, but again, it's easy to correct, you know, because you're not actually laying down pigment paint, it's not affecting the pixels on the painting itself. So if I did dip over, you can see it just kind of blends into the an overlay of the shirt and colorizes that too. You know, it, it might even be better for me to use a broader or a larger setting because then I can lay down a more even 
coat. You can see all it's doing, it's maintaining the value. So the darks and the shadows, like I mentioned earlier, are still just as dark. And the lights are just as light. It's just colorizing those gray pixels. And you can see how this is kind of a great technique very quickly. I mean, if you didn't know any different, you, you might just think that I did a horrible job painting this and I was using orange coloration and like, why in the world is that guy coloring him like that? But but now let's introduce a different tone. So again, I, I, I'm, I won't stay in this orange area. I'll, I'm gonna bring it, you know, uh, let's pull up a different quality of skin tone here and let's see what it looks like. You are really gonna have to just play with it until you get it. So again, it's there's not enough pink in there, I think. I might like that a little bit more. See the lips I always go for myself. I like them to be a little bit more on the, the pink side, but you can see already how it's coming to life a little bit here. So um, again, as I was mentioning about the, uh, the color refraction and the lighting that's going to happen in this, you have an option to really think about very playfully, like what color is the light? What's the background? There's no color applied to the background right now. It's gray. Um, if you were imagining a blue sky, well, that might in, that might influence the choice of color that is going to be on the side of his face. Because you know, if there's a blue sky, then maybe maybe it's picking up a nice blue, and that's influencing the color that's refracting on the the sides. That might be the case. For me, um, well. It, I'm actually going to continue with that because just to show you because now I might lightly begin to layer on a little bit more of a blue tone that's happening on the side of the face in the shadow. See how that works and you can you can really play with it like that. You know his eyes I'm going to get into the eyes right now with the blue since I have it selected. Let's get some blue in the eye. To, kick that off so we can really begin to see his features take shape. That's already looking not bad. Now I, I don't want the blue, I don't think in his face. I want to do something and I love playing with color and I like doing stuff a little bit unorthodox. By the way if you're Playing with this and you just want to toy with it, you know, without ruining things that you've done, you can always create another layer and layer it over top just to play with and, and set it to a color, a color blend mode. And you have the freedom to kind of do the same thing. Um, and then you can turn turn on and off that layer just to see how, how it's looking with or without. But so here's the playfulness that I, I'm going to go for in this painting. I love. I love thinking about like if he's in kind of a place where there's an unusual color happening on the side. What, let's say there was a pink color. Um, this painting method allows you to really play with the lighting that's happening in the environment around him. I'm imagining he's in a place where there's a lot of pink light, warm pink light. I'm just going to, I'm going to get a little bit wild. You're going to see, and just like painting, you can really push the color around. Because yeah, some of this looks a little bit wacky. Like why is his skin pink, like glowing pink? Um, the way to combat when it gets a little bit glowy like that is to pull it back into the warm orange tones is that gets into more natural, but it can, and it can still be really vibrant. Um, if I continue making videos, you're gonna see I really like to play with um, 
vibrant color. Sometimes as, um, as painters, we get very literal about skin tones, you know, oh, that's gotta be the, the flesh color, you know, and what you miss are opportunities to really uh, explore color. And I think this painting method is very conducive to that because again, you're not wrecking your painting. You're doing nothing to harm the painting itself, but you're, you're now able to really see. I don't know if you noticed that. I'm going to go zoom in here. You notice how the blue is still, there's a hint of that blue that's still in there. So yeah, stuff like that is cool. Like you can actually leave that. And sometimes the greatest paintings that you'll come across, though the artist will just leave little pops of color and, and it becomes a very uh, interesting looking color palette. The way that some artists blend color, like you don't even, you might not even, if unless you're really looking at it, you might not even notice that there's blue in there. But then when you start really looking at the brush strokes, it's kind of like that with um, a very loose painting style. When it's done really well, you don't notice the brush strokes. You, you might not even notice that it's like super, super rough. But then when you look, you can see every single stroke. And you know the artist was just pushing paint and playing with the, the coloration and having fun with it. Um, and as an observer, unless you're really looking at it, sometimes you don't even you don't even notice. So you see what I'm doing? I, I went with those pinks and now I'm just I'm I'm pulling it back with the orange kind of traditional skin flesh colors. And I'm just slowly pulling, but you can really, really, really play with the colors. I, I, I'm just such a fan of doing that. So the thing when you do um, think about the way that the coloration might be on the side of the face, say in this instant, I'm kind of going with this purpley, pinky tone, like there's a... So now you're, you need to kind of follow through with that light source. The light source is coming from kind of behind over here, so it's not gonna catch the full side of the head, but it might catch corners of the nose. It might catch the highlights here on the nose. Catch some of the, on the bridge of the nose up here, it might catch some of that. You'll see it pop a little bit on the, that's the whole purpose of shadowing is it creates the contour. And if you can imagine where those contours are on the face and how it bending, wrapping around. So the color would just kind of flow across the screen like this. Uh, let's go back now into the other side of the face a little bit more deliberately. We're adding the pinks in the face to liven that up a little bit. Again, I'm thinking about what the eye might see. And sometimes the coloration that you choose, it's not even 100% accurate to real life. Like chances are the coloration in the face might not look like this. But when you have the opportunity to play with color like this, you can, um, you can actually make it pretty convincing that that's what the color might be. But that's what I love about this coloration approach. It's, it allows you to really, really experiment. So we might speed up the video in a couple places here as I do this and you can kind of continue to watch the process. I don't want this to be like the longest video you've ever watched.
In the original drawing, I, I might have tried to introduce a little bit more shadowing in here. It looks like it might have needed it. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to try the, that multiply. I'm, I'm going to create a multiply layer, we're going to call it. Multiply is where it, it kind of uh, pulls the base dark colors out when you overlay color on it. So this layer, I'm going to call it a multiply layer. And what it's going to do, it, it's going to really focus on anything that I lay down on the on the painting it's going to want to darken it I'll show you an example so I have a kind of an, a red brown color right now if I lay on color and it's overlaying but it's 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 darkening everything up a little bit and you can but this time it'll have a little bit more impact on the value because it's actually layering on the dark pixels that are there. So you can see when I was using that previous layer, it was a color layer and it was just colorizing pixels. This is this will actually darken the pixel. You, you can see it'll actually impact a little bit more strongly. So but that's a, that's a valuable thing for places where you do want to introduce shadow. Again, you're not you're not wrecking the base pixels you're not painting over top of them but what we're doing is we're just trying to say okay we need a little bit more depth and richness in that area as we're coloring so in this area here we're gonna do that we're gonna we're gonna darken this just a little bit There might be different places on your painting where you, you do need to do that. I believe um, in Procreate. By the way, I'm very new at Procreate. I'm just beginning to learn and I'm hoping eventually to be able to do some tutorials there um, using some techniques. Um, but you can also apply blend effects, bl layer blending in the same way that I'm doing here. All right. I'm liking it. It has a very bright feel. Um, I don't mind it. Um, if you wanted to see what it looked like with less vibrancy to it, you just change the opacity on your layer. So I'm going to pull it back and you might find that you want to go a little bit lighter than your own color colorization. And you can play with that a little bit as well. Thank you. 
So colorizing grayscale. It's a great tool. It's something that I, uh, I definitely, it's a technique that you see a lot of other digital artists using and it's, it's worth exploring. Um, you get some pretty great results and it allows you to really experiment with, with the painting uh, without wrecking the value and the structure of the drawing itself. Give it a try, see if you like it. This is my very first painting tutorial with me. Uh, I've, I'm gonna get better. I know I'm just kind of stumbling my way through how to approach this, but uh, I'm excited to do more. If you do want to follow, please subscribe. I know that's the, isn't that what everybody does? They beg for, please subscribe. Um, like my video if you, if you did like it. Feel free to comment if you want uh, me to do anything particular. Um, a, uh, a drawing style. I don't know. I'm going to figure out things that welcomes interaction from the community. I'm going to do a lot more tutorials. My bigger vision of everything is to start doing uh, some tutorials on things like Skillshare, uh, Patreon, different things like that. I'd love for my career to transition to doing this kind of stuff full time. I love art. I love painting. Uh, I've done teaching in various ways uh, throughout my life. And this is just another avenue where I can kind of combine my passion with some of my lifelong skills. Come along for the ride with me. I would love it. Say hello, send me a message, whatever you want. You can follow me on Instagram and all those things. I'm around. I'm going to be around. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.